we're back in the saddle and we want to talk about uh, some late round running back <laughs> must drafts. I can feel it down in my plums. That's what this is all about right here. You get into these, and we're talking about in the ninth ish round. We set that as the threshold because you threshold. know we're maybe that's not quite the late round for everybody, but it's. That's where you have to start having the conversations about these running backs and, and, and when you're going to draft them because it, d it is a big point in your draft in that 8th, ninth, 10th, 11th round where there are certainly still some wide receivers that you like probably more than, at least me, like a bit more than a lot of these running backs. But as far as I'm concerned, this is usually where I, I might have drafted one running back, like one bell cow super early. But I, I haven't addressed the running back position a lot, so now you have to start thinking about it. And these are some of the guys that are always in my queue when I get to this point in the draft. So, Austin, you want me to start, or you, you want to kick this thing off? I'll kick things off, man. Right. The first running back that I, I want to talk about is Brian Robinson Jr. Love it. Now, here's a guy... It's so interesting. I felt like people were so in on him his rookie season. They were so high on him, right? Remember, he's going neck and neck with Antonio Gibson. You had that whole fiasco with the unfortunate incident off the field. Mm. He kind of comes back towards the end of his you know, rookie campaign, heats up. And then he goes out this past season. It looks pretty good, man. You know, he had a higher yards per carry than Saquon Barkley, 4.1. Uh, more receiving yards than Jameer Gibbs. And that's something that is wild to me. If, yeah. if you watch this season, if you watch Washington football, which wasn't pretty. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you're crazy if you did. But regardless, the amount of yards per reception that this man had was absurd. Like he, he his yak ability was Damn. outrageous. and. It, it really was so impressive. And of all people, like Brian Robinson Jr., like I, I didn't, I don't peg him as that type of dude. And and the fact that he also had more touchdowns than Bijan Robinson, I mean, man, I'm telling you, like if you if you get a minute, go look at his stats, go look look at some of the advanced analytics, just just watch the tape. I mean, you'll be impressed with Brian Robinson Jr. I promise you, you will be at least a little bit higher on him if you do some due diligence, do some research on him. Um, yeah, he literally had, he was first in the NFL in yards per reception at 10.2. So just, I mean, that, that in itself, you know, is always going to get your attention and fifth in yards per route run, never a bad sign. Um, and now when I think of Brian Robinson Jr., first thing that really comes to mind is he's so physically imposing. Like dude is, yeah. dude is, he's not just a regular running back, right? He's six foot one, 228 pounds. He's a beast. Okay. Uh, I, I just want to give a quick reminder, Casey draft capital drink day two, you know, I'm happy about that. Uh, and he crushed like he, I want to go back a little bit further. He crushed his final season at Alabama. Right. And now we're talking like 1600 rushing yards, 16 rushing touchdowns. Um, I, I, ju I just, I, yeah, I just want to point that out there. Like, he crushed the best collegiate defenses on the biggest stage. And, you know, he received the good draft capital. And now, obviously, Gibson out of town. Yes, they do have Austin Eckler in town, right? That's a whole other story in itself. A few more things about Brian Robinson Jr., and I'll kick it over to you, Casey. He was seventh in yards created per touch, so he was very efficient. 14th in yards created, that's not bad at all, right? Especially at his ADP. And he averaged 14.3 touches per game. That comes out to just under 250 on the year. I mean, I'm not going to call him a workhorse, but he wasn't far off his pace, right? I guess I'll leave you with, with this final, final piece of information, Casey. Uh, he ranked 31st in red zone touches while finishing 12th in total touchdowns. Okay, I thought that was really telling, right? That's I think it's blatantly obvious that Brian Robinson Jr. knows how to find the end zone despite the lack of volume in the red zone. So Yeah, we, we've got a whole rebuilt commanders unit coming in here. It's completely different from everything that we've known the commanders for the last few years. Um, and I, I'm glad you brought up Brian Robinson. That was that was a lot of good information from Brian Robinson because I do think he's kind of slept on, but he is certainly someone who was always in my queue uh, when we're getting it past that ninth round, and I'm, I'm looking to grab a bunch of green boxes in a row here at some point for, for your sleeper drafts. Those are running backs uh, if you're not messing with the sleeper. We got him at 12-2 with the FFD ADP here. So that's, uh, you know, he hangs around, and, and for everything Austin just pointed out, uh, I think I think it's warranted to grab a selection there. We don't know exactly how Austin Eckler is going to fit into this offense and what they're going to do. Uh, we're not sure how Jaden Daniels is, is going to respond as a rookie, but uh, Brian Robinson could certainly be, you know, part of his, uh, 
best friend, his tree of trust, his, his circle of uh, comrades there over over there in the commander. So I, I like the idea of grabbing Brian Robinson. We're not sure where Austin Eckler stands on the on the washed Venn diagram or not. Um, I'm not ready to throw him in there. Still, he's basically dead. Still isn't a he? good wide receiver. Still a good receiving back. He gets no respect. Um, like like he's no one thinks he, about him at all. He hangs around a good bit too. So I, p- part of. Uh, you know what I like to, to see and, and do here, and, and I'm sure some people will disagree with it and say it's a it's a waste of of picks. And he hangs around, you know, 13th, 14th round a lot of the times. RB 40, 13, um, 3. 13, 3. And I'm doing a mock right now for ADP purposes, and he hung around uh, a little longer than that. So uh, to kind of go into where I'm I'm going to go is you can you can kind of pigeonhole, you know. A backfield or or three here throughout the back half of this draft here, which you know you could grab Austin Eckler and Brian Robinson here, and you know have a, have a good chance to get one of those guys to come out and really uh, produce for you, whether it's Brian Robinson or Austin Eckler. Maybe it's different guys at different parts of the season because of health or you know how the offense is flowing or anything like that. So I do really like the Brian Robinson call out there. On my side of things, I'm going to stick with the theme that I was just saying. I'm going to go Alvin Kamara and Kendra Miller um, as as basically my must draft late round guys because Alvin Kamara is nine going around the ninth round, and uh, we know Alvin Kamara as far on the rushing side of things didn't have an Alvin Kamara like season, but on the pass catching side of things was still very very uh, productive, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and missed well, how many games was he suspended? Missed three games, I believe, to start the year. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but in game in weeks one through seventeen, missing three games, he was third in yards per route run, first in receptions, second in targets, fourth in yards, and only one receiving touchdown in that whole you know season. Which is not usually you would see more than that. He was second on the team in targets and receptions. And who have they really added at the end of the day to take a bunch of? Uh, you know, weight off of Alvin Kamara's, or at least no, a better way, maybe food out of Alvin Kamara's mouth is, is nobody. They brought Shahid back. Mm-hmm. Michael Thomas is out of there. Um, you know, uh, and it's Chris Olave. It's Bub Bub Memes. You know, that's a top five in the name draft of this year's uh, draft class. But <laughs> you know, and I I don't hate Bub, but you know, got Listen, got, Bub. got something to be desired. At Perry looked like he mm. could be okay. You know, but I'm, I'm not. And Jawan Johnson is, is always perennially underrated and un, underrated and good. Uh, but what you're what if you watch the Saints at all? Me and Big Co were talking about this. I called him today to to, to discuss my my guys here a little. Um, and it was just this: there wasn't a more stale offense in the league last year than the Saints. Right? You turn the, it was like Jesus. This is so boring, so ugly, so vanilla. And we, we talked, me and Austin, we, we talked about this on a show before about some buys, and we talked about Chris Olave, like one of the pro- top three, I believe, in, in pre-snap motion uh, wide receivers in the league mm-hmm. in a couple of advanced metrics there. <gasps> and and the Saints were like dead last or third to last in, in pre-snap motion. Well, QQB act coming in. Now you can pretty much bank that they're going to be top 10 in more creative, more pre-snap motion. We know where all the good offenses are lying right now. A lot of them are lying in that pre-snap motion, getting those good guys, uh, you know, moving before the snap goes, confused, making the defense move around and adjust, at least tell you what they're doing beforehand, what they're in, so you, you can then adjust. <laughs> you know, you just it's a bad process if you're not, you know, running a lot of uh, motion or, or at least trying to, you know, just copy all of Kyle Shanahan's plays. That's you, right. Was this is a if you don't know, this is a Gary Kubiak Gary. was was along with Mike Shanahan right. a long time ago. So all a lot of ties here, and you know you could go nepotism, but nepotism's working for for Kyle Shanahan. That's what I mean. That's uh, like the but definite, that's but that's that's what it is. Then Clint Kubiak was on the staff, um, and now he's going to be the OC over there. Uh, you know, sometimes you could say these things don't work out, but. The Niners have had a pretty good track record of guys going other where other places and installing a pretty good offense over the last like four or five years here of guys leaving. And and then so then on the other side of that, you can grab Kendra Miller at 12 six, who I love uh, was hurt last year. Knee injury coming in. You kind of you, you kind of knew the writing was on the wall. They signed uh, Jamal Williams. Terrible signing. Terrible contract. I just can't see any way that Kendra Miller is not on the field a whole lot more this season. Alvin Kamara also, I just said draft him, pick him up. I like him. I think he's still going to be very good for your fantasy teams. Oh, by the way, uh, you know, 
Alvin Kamara was, uh, I believe, in third points per game, uh, 17.9. Uh, through I, weeks one through it. seven, I mean, 17. I won a championship because I wasn't expecting any, anything from him, and right. he just crushed. And Kendra Miller on the week eighteen, where Alvin Kamara didn't play, came in and played excellent. Um, and he's a great receiving back. He's got a three down skill set. He's the future of this team. And if the Saints aren't any good, they probably need to get out from underneath this contract that they have with Alvin Kamara. Burn some dead money, trade him away, eat some cap for a minute. And I haven't looked into the details, but I know he's owed a lot of money. So. You know, everyone's like, well, you can't everyone says you can't get rid of somebody and then they eventually do. And then they just end up eating cap to get out of it. And, and Alvin Kamara goes to a contender or somewhere else and cue Kendra Miller. So this is a uh, this is kind of how I like to view uh, these later round running back puzzles of grabbing. Hey, I can grab Alvin Kamara, get a starter and I can grab Kendra Miller. If anything happens to him. Great. I got kind of the future. I love Kendra Miller. Um, and and uh, I, I feel like you're you're really grabbing a piece of, of something that, that could be potentially on the come up here um, and, and really provide you with, with good points week in, week out, regardless of, of health in either direction. Casey, that was, that was a really good rant, man. As, as literally, as you said, fantasy points per game, I was in the middle of looking it up myself and yeah, he was third. I knew he was up there. I knew he was like top five, but yeah. third 17.9. I mean, dude, that is, that's the epitome of a game, you know, of, of a league winner like right. that is phenomenal um he's dead because he's old but who cares you know one, one thing i want to add sure. alvin Kamara, so i just charted the other day i threw it up on twitter i charted the top 24 running backs from 2023 alvin Kamara was second in yards per route run 1.73 i think he was only behind Brees hall by a hair i think it was Brees. And he missed four games, right? Otherwise, if, if he didn't miss those four games, Kamara would have ranked first in nearly all categories. I'm talking yeah. targets, receptions, receiving yards, uh, maybe not receiving touchdowns because CMC no, had he like only had one seven. receiving touchdowns. So. Yeah, yeah, but but regardless, you know, which you should be, it should be a, a, a what's the not the regression, regression. but the uh, positive, good, regression. positive regression. There we go, the good regression, the good regression towards um, the mean. But yeah, oh geez, but yeah, man, that was uh, no good call. Here, I like that one. Yeah, so like I said, I, I like drafting, grabbing two parts of, of a backfield and trying to corner it here. And, and I think in this in these later rounds, you can you can do a little bit of that. So Austin, who you got next for us? Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 Rookie Draft Kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. All right, I have, I have a really polarizing answer here, and I want to hear everybody's thoughts on it. How about Nick Chubb? How do you guys feel about Nick Chubb, man? I think here's kind of my thought process. I think that the upside is way too good. I think that Nick Chubb's track record is simply way too good. His ADP has never been lower. Mm. Yes, obviously, because, you know, he had that, uh, was it a dislocated knee and a torn MCL, I believe. Um, yeah, and the injury looked horrible. Um, Nick, look, Nick Chubb has been nothing but durable throughout his entire career. He had that bad knee injury mm -hmm. in college at Georgia super healthy for for years and years and years yes he just had a gruesome injury and he did say in an interview last week he wasn't certain about his timeline he wasn't necessarily certain uh, he said he's gonna take it day by day and i get that it's a risky pick i get it but it's that risk is baked into his adp already um, yeah. i guess my thought process is i would take a flyer on chubb at an extremely low price at rb 41 um you know he's neck and neck with guys like like Zach Charbonnet and Kendra Miller. And to be honest with you, man, those players are not going to be league winners. Unless there's a major injury in front of them, they are not going to win you anything. I promise you that. Nick Chubb, on the other hand, could absolutely take over and, and win you a league. You know, again, all pending his health. I, I guess I'll kind of leave you with this, man. Like 1,525 rushing yards a year, the year before, 1,259 before that. The production's never been an issue. Every time Nick Nick Chubb steps foot on the field, you know that the production is going to be there. Yeah. You know, you know that the efficiency is going to be there. He has, and for what it's worth, Nick Chubb has four consecutive seasons as the RB ten or better in points per game. Right, really, 
again, strong track record, a long, a long, long track record as well. It's not like it's just been one, two, three years, man. Every dude, what did he have? 996 yards his first season in the NFL. And he literally should have had a thousand. Besides that, he's had a thousand every other year except getting hurt last year. I'm just saying, well, man. Like, I was in his way that year, Nick, too, right? That, that first year. I, think so. I, I think you're correct. Like week was six, they traded him, and then it was like, oh, my God, go pick up Nick Chubb on the waiver wire, and then you win the league. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm it, you're Jason, you're 100% right, but uh, guys, am I crazy? Like, am I, am I nuts for taking a stab at no, Nick I mean, Chubb at, at the end of your draft? You know, th- we're talking RB41, man. Yeah, He's no. only 28. <laughs> Uh, yeah. No, I mean that's 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 you know the stabs you got to take and and you know I I, was, I started my rant off by which, saying real quick he, I'm not sure which ADP you're referencing uh, I think he's looking at fantasy fantasy pros, pros. a little right, higher right. than ours RB 32 1105 okay. which is still a deal sorry Casey right no no uh, you you I I was starting to say in my rant earlier of people might not like grabbing both backs and something but here's another example of you can do that you can get chubb and you can get forward and you can say hey you're burning picks by doing that it's like bro Mm -hmm. you're burning picks in these rounds anyway you're not going to hit on all these so i can take a little bit of risk out of there and know that i have one of them and and make sure that i hit on one of these running backs uh and chubb is certainly somebody who could have a league winning situation uh, it might not be until week six when he comes back or he might not ever be the same again. But even probably 80 percent of Nick Chubb is still probably pretty damn solid. Uh, but again, yeah. you can come in here and Jerome Ford's on my list, too. I, I, I wasn't going to necessarily I got a large list of these guys that we could go through. Uh, yeah. But Jerome Ford should be on this list. Jerome Ford was very productive last year and you can get mm-hmm. him at 1401 RB 43 uh, for, for an R ADP right now. And I think Chubb is actually da- like in the last couple drafts we did. I think Big Co might have just taken him in the 13th round in a mock that we're in. So Ford and Chubb might be a little closer right now. Um, so Chubb in the 13th forward in the 14th ish but you could still get that done if you really wanted to and we're in mocks. So you know another point is that when you're in mocks you're obviously only picking one time in a round, but if you're in an actual startup, there's, you know, and you're trading around, there's some chances that you have chunks where you have multiple picks in areas. Um, and, and Big Co made a good point when we were on the phone to kind of talk about that. So, so shout out to him because uh, we're, we're always, you know, we're looking at this through ADP. talking and, about guys. And mock, and mock drafts. <laughs> and, and well, when you're in a real startup, you, you, you're, you're doing a lot more trading. You can't trade in a mock, obviously. Um, and I know some people think mock drafts are worthless. I, I think they're, they're very useful. Um, you got you, know. you get what you put in, right? Um, and and what the other people are putting in. It, it's, you need it's twelve. Almost, you, you need that's almost you need 10. as important. You need um, an, you need right. like most. Right. You need a couple guys who are going to be like the Jabrones in the regular league and just be, you know, Idiots. throwing things all all yeah. the loop. So no, Austin. To answer your question, I I, I don't think it's a terrible shot. Uh, and like I said, you can come right back and get Ford. They've real like uh, they've added Naheen Hines also coming back from a jet ski injury. Um, I do think that that was Chubb's same knee from college, so I don't really love that. And I think he wh- what he had a surgery and then another surgery. Is that what what kind of happened? Or when they got in there, it was worse than they thought, or something. So those things I, I don't necessarily love, but I mean, you know, where we're at, I, he he hadn't had a problem. Everybody was worried about it coming out of college. He hadn't had a problem since. Terrible knee injury now, but like you said, it's baked in, uh, and you can get forward and and get yourself the the, the starter. Um, they got Pierre Strong. And they have, I think they might have, oh, they added um, my boy, uh, Dante Foreman. Uh, but <laughs> uh, but Ford, Ford was good. He deserves to be the guy. And then you can grab Chubb, so I don't hate that at all. Chubb, it was the same torn ACL that he had in college. And then after the initial surgery that they thought it was just his MCL, there it was his ACL as well. So, yeah. Yeah, Accurate yeah man. On all accounts. Boom, boom, boom. My, uh, my thought process here is, it's not even like a must draft, and I know that's what we're yapping about now, but it's more of like must acquire or must trade for or pick up on the waiver wire or, or wherever. Or insane draft, draft values. In, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm talking like mid, mid-season though, man. Like yeah. I really think we're talking, again, Casey, you said what, week six, week eight, whenever that yeah. may be. I think that may be the time to strike for Nick Chubb because, you know, hey, maybe he starts getting utilized a lot more and the volume starts to ramp up. And then before you know it, man, you, ha- you have a league winner for dirt cheap. Right. And everybody's always trying to get running backs. I don't care. Everybody always needs running backs. I, I agree. And, and you if, know, for money leagues. Right. Well, and if, I think like there's a decent amount of money involved. Then people like running backs. Otherwise, 
Why, well, I mean, well, it just Perpetual depends on rebuilding. depends on who you listen to, what what, what you subscribe to. Um, if you have like ten, $20 wide receivers leagues, are certainly stop. are certainly you know the better currency currently. Um, but you know, in there are I'm in certainly plenty of leagues where running backs still hold a lot more value than uh, people would lead you to believe. But right, but wide, buy-in, wide buy-in receivers. Higher. Uh, I mean, not necessarily. Well, I mean, Dude, I'm not it's like pl- clear. Not playing day. in no, I but I. That's not true. Um, I would just say, in general, the wide receivers hold more value in currency just because they're longer shelf life, you know. And the people who don't pay attention to podcasts and stuff like that, and and kind of what the status quo is, that's probably a little stickier on the on the side of of the running back things. But um, you know, every league just has different value sets of of how they value their running backs and and. So that's, that's just what you we talk about all the time. Every league, every draft, all that stuff's going to be different. So you have to figure out and kind of figure the league out and know what that yeah. is, uh, you know, as you work through. I guess mm-hmm. part of it is like if you're in home leagues with your boys, that's even more motivation to want to win. And I feel like in all those leagues, every person's like, I'm just like one running back away from. Yeah. You know, well, it's like, no, the, you're not. Man. Well, uh, that the pro- like the problem is, is that the running back then is the position of scarcity then if, if it could because everybody's so up in the air of of who to play so you need them uh but you don't really nece- it's like one of those things where you you know you don't want to get caught holding the holding the bag there so uh nobody wants to be the guy with the with the running back who died on their team and i think some people just need to get over that and just take the points of of you know the mystery box and there's uh, time there's, to take the points there's time to move off right, the guy you know right. we, we moved off dalvin cook at the perfect time right we, we, we'll, and then sometimes it goes like that I, i'm gonna be me and zeke are gonna be on a couple teams together <laughs> until he's not <laughs> he fucking, started and stayed with you uh, that's right <laughs> Uh, you know, there was some times where there are some teams that he left, but there are whole some teams. Spent his whole he, career on where Casey's where OK he, team, where he hung out with me. Uh, all right, so then the next one for me, I'm going same same deal as my first one. I'm going Zach Moss Chase Brown combination. Now this one I found is a little harder to tie down to get both of them uh, because they float around in the same kind of area a lot, especially in a lot of the FFD drafts. So um, be sure to like, subscribe, comment on 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 the YouTube's there. And these drafts are, of course, going down in the uh, in the Patreons, the Discords. Follow on Twitter, and you can hop in some of these. We throw some out to the public. But the free Discord uh, and the paid $5 holler is the best way to get that uh, and get in there and, and get access to this ADP and all sorts of other stuff. So, uh, But Zach Moss, 12-10 in our ADP. Chase Brown, 13-5 in our ADP. I want to typically get one of them. It's usually leaned more towards Chase Brown because uh, I can wait a little while longer. Um, and there seems to be some... You know, some people are out on Zach Moss. Some think some people are in on Zach Moss. Look, Zach Moss was was pretty good and pretty productive and looked the part when he was out there filling in for JT. Even some weeks splitting with JT uh, was pretty good. There uh, was was from weeks two through eight, which he didn't play in week one, uh, and then they had a bunch of injuries. Uh, he was RB four with seventeen point nine points per game uh, in that stretch. So really good run there for Zach Moss. Uh, the stat floating around where. Zach Moss was also really excelled in shotgun formations. And where does he go to the Bengals who run a shit ton of shotgun formations? So Zach Moss kind of fits in well with what they have going on. We know this is an offense that can score a lot of points. We know this is an offense that you want every bit of parts and pieces of tied to Joe Burrow. They'll check it down a lot. Joe Mixon has been great. Uh, for the Bengals, they've moved on. They're going to try to get it done with Zach Moss and Chase Brown. Chase Brown, the more explosive player here and the cheaper player and slightly younger player. I think the better pass catcher as well. Um, he's the kind of guy that can make your day in, in one play. But but Zach Moss can can grind it for him. I think has some explosion and I thought played really well last year. So uh, those two guys, when you're getting in the doldrums of, of round 11, 12, 13, and you're just looking for some running backs because like I said when I'm building my team a lot of these times uh, I'm, I'm I'm gonna hammer one maybe running back and then it's gonna be quarterbacks and wide receivers and some tight ends because I'm usually playing tight end premium and then I'm gonna throw a bunch of green boxes through this you know nine through 15 and they're not gonna all be green I'm gonna mix in some some fun wide receiver stabs and some fun wide receiver veterans in there uh, maybe and maybe like a you know a fun tight end or a fun like a Justin Fields or something like a fun quarterback stab. Uh, but you know this is again I, I like this strategy I like being able to if I can possibly get two of these grab Moss and Chase Brown I think both are, are really good players w- one Chase Brown is kind of somebody who if he explodes on the scene the value is going to go through the roof I don't know how much of the value of Zach Moss is going to go 
through the roof, but somebody who's looking for a running back in season, you might be able to squeeze a two out of him. If Zach Moss is out there just crushing uh, for the for the Bengals there. Maybe even more. Maybe the hype really builds for him. But Chase Brown will be the one to own if you're looking to be in that productive struggle, have somebody explode or have somebody on your team. Zach Moss is, is probably somebody who you're looking for of, of maybe potential startability right out of the gate. But uh, I do like both, and I, I don't mind having both. Chase Brown's the one I typically end up with the most of, but uh, that's kind of how I feel about those two. Austin, you got uh, anything on them? Yeah, I uh, I it's so Casey. I think this is a good call. Um, man, if I had to pick one of the running backs, I feel very good with Zach Moss here. Uh, but I'll, I'll give you just a few nuggets. Chase Brown, the highest yards per route run amongst all running backs in the NFL at four point four six. Ridiculously yeah. good, underrated good receiver, man. Really good, man. Torched the Colts. Oh my god, mm. torched them so bad that when they played this season, I, I vividly, <laughs> I still have nightmares about that game. Um, <laughs> but. 20 yard I want to talk about his explosiveness Chase Brown real quick and and I just again Zach Moss would be my choice but I want I want to yap about Chase Brown real quick 20 plus yard carries in 2023 Joe Mixon had 3 Chase Brown had 2 on 213 less attempts okay just something to think about Chase Brown is the third running back since 2011 to have a yards per route run over 4.00 while running 20 plus routes so the sample size was still decent. Um, it wasn't, th- I wouldn't necessarily call it fluky. Mm-hmm. And just two final things that, that I'll mention Cincinnati, you know, signing Zach Moss, it was a two year deal that was up to 8 million. And Chase Brown's final college season, almost 1,900 rushing yards, yeah. 13 touchdowns. So, yeah. like, dude, dude popped off, you know. I love Chase Brown coming out. I like Chase Brown this year. I, I like what you saw in little glimpses of, of, I like you. of explosion uh, from him. Yeah. So I, I I love the Chase Brown and I love if I could maybe corner that backfield I don't I don't hate it at all because it's a backfield that that could be uh, highly covered yeah! in fantasy points. So Austin uh, hit us with your last must draft late round running back. What you got? Abs- absolutely, man. And and you know we're talking dynasty. We are talking super flex dynasty startup. That these players are not necessarily always going to pop. You know the first year. But they, man, these are these are players that you want to buy now. A lot of these guys, and I want I want to talk about Marshawn Lloyd for a minute. Ooh, um, a little rookie for your pleasure, Josh. I, I want to bring up Josh Jacobs. Okay, if there's one thing that you need to know, when, when especially at the running back position, you should always pay attention to the contracts. I think they matter so much. At least to me, they do. I think that they're very telling. You know, money talks. Josh Jacobs, he got the bag. He signed a four-year deal. It was forty-eight million dollars. A pump for him. He's deserving of it. He's been phenomenal. I, I love Josh Jacobs. The reason I bring this up, Casey, the, Patac- the the Packers have a potential out after this season. So it's just something to think about. I, I'm not saying that they're going to part ways with him one year, but there's a chance. Like in They legitimately could, okay? And they did spend day two draft capital on Marshawn Lloyd. He was one of four running backs in the 2024 class to receive day two draft capital or better. Uh, a few other things about Marshawn Lloyd, a hundredth percentile in missed tackles forced per reception, 99th percentile in yards after contact per attempt, 99th percentile in missed tackles forced per attempt, and an 87th percentile rushing grade per PFF. Not bad, right? We're talking about a guy that's 5'9", 220, so he's a yeah. he's he's not necessarily the most physically imposing, but he is stocky. Well, like yeah. he is very that's, very that's, built. That's and solid. No, no, I, I'm not. I'm not like downplaying that it. Looks, but that, that picture this, Jay Wayne's got up right here. Just guy yeah. chiseled face. The BMI. Yeah, dude. Oh. I, he had an impressive 7.1 yards per carry in, in 2023. And uh, Casey, I brought this up on the podcast in the past. A reminder that Caleb Williams helped recruit him. Mm. Not a bad thing when the first overall pick wants to play with you. I guess I'll kind of leave it at this, man. Uh, the, it was the second in yards per carry in the entire class at 7.1. I believe he only trailed, was it Jalen Wright? I, that's 7.4 right, I think. for Jalen Wright, I think. Yeah, okay, so 7.1 for Marshawn Lloyd. Wildly impressive. Um, and I'm just saying, I think that there's a world that exists where Marshawn Lloyd could be the running back one for the Packers in 2025 if everything breaks right, yeah. right? We know we know AJ, look, man, AJ Dillon's obviously not it. He's had every chance in the world to be the guy. They parted ways with Aaron Jones. They, they would have not have... Bro- I'm sorry. What'd you say? <laughs> no, I was just. No, you're good. You're, I was just 
being sad about AJ Dillon. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I I used to like AJ Dillon back in like 2012, but I, yeah. we just we know he's not it. Yeah. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Fell off the jet with him. Yeah. 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 Uh, but it, it is what it is, man. But go buy Marshawn Lloyd. Yeah, no, I tractor I, beam sucked me right in. I, I I like the Lloyd the Lloyd and Wright stabs for sure for the for the little bit more high end rookies. Um, so I don't I don't hate that at all. And and we know that the Packers want, are going to deploy two two running backs in this system. Um, and I I think you know mm-hmm. we've heard Lafleur talk about it. Um, I think the coach speak index thing. If you're not following that on on the Twitters, make sure you go follow that. Make sure you're following Austin Abbott uh, at Austin Abbott, two B's, two T's, and two F's as well. Uh, not saying that he's not a great follow as well. He's got a lot of good information. But the coach, what's the F for? What are the F's for? Fancy. Can't tell you. For FEMA? Is can't it for FEMA? I, is it for? I can't say it on the pod, Jason. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll text you. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> F is for Familia. It's a big Farrah Fawcett fan. <laughs> I'm just uh, strictly a little tunchy. I mean, what? Is, <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we 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 know we know that there's probably going to be two guys deployed. I think Marshawn Lloyd's a very good player. Is is a contract that they could get out of. So I don't I don't hate it at all. I, I don't even care. Even if he sticks around, I'm fine with Lloyd hanging out for a minute. That's that's cool. Like, I think Lloyd's a good player and can carve out a role all for himself. Yeah. So that's all well and good. Just don't forget the F. That's that, what you that, got to make that's sure. That's right. That's and right. Both Fs really. Don't forget the baby. One either. of our Fs is for fun. You can guess yeah. what the other one is. <laughs> All right, so my last guy here of insane draft values <laughs> is uh, I've got a whole list here, so we'll bring some back for sure. Singletary was about to make the cut because I uh-huh. target him in every single draft, uh, but I wanted to throw Rico Dowdle in there. Someone even way later, so, so you couldn't even say that we weren't going super deep and late here. Going so deep. Rico Dowdle, 17.10 ADP here. I got um, a 10. You know, yards created per touch, 3.92. That was ninth. Overall, Rico, baby, them Rico laws, baby. Yeah. Um, but now, look, again, you can draft Ezekiel Elliott really cheap, and you can draft Rico Daddle even cheaper if you want to. You don't have to draft Ezekiel Elliott if you don't want to, but I can pretty much tell you that Rico Daddle makes it on every single one of my mock draft teams in round like 18 as you're leaving the mock, and it's like mm-hmm. this thing is so wide open. He's shown that he can be pretty productive. Now, he hasn't had a ton of carries in the league, uh, but Obviously, he's in line to be at least the 1B, if not seemingly the 1A here. Now, they could. there's rumors of Damian Pierce maybe being traded there. Maybe they pick up somebody else Who's um, Damian Pierce? That, that, they, that they trade in there. But right now, Rico Dowdle just seems to be the most screaming value of all. The Cowboys know that you're going to lean on the run game at times, check it down to the running back at times. We've been infatuated with everybody from the Dallas Cowboys from the running back position. And right now, nobody seems to care about... Rico Dowdle being potentially their guy and and in short glimpses of what we've seen from Rico Dowdle he's been very good and very productive now we don't know if we're going to extrapolate that into being uh you know awesome for the whole season but the Cowboys haven't seemed to to really put uh you know a premium on the running back position now that that maybe they're going so far off the beaten path because they got they they got so snake bitten by the the Jerry Jones didn't want to hear another single word about running back contracts after the Ezekiel Elliott one but uh, you know I, I just I it makes no sense to me that Rico Dattle just sits around here and I can get him in the 17th 18th round of just basically having a wide open path to being an, a, a, an RB1 really at the end of the day. I mean, Cowboys offense, decent. Mm-hmm. Uh, this they, is they, the hot takes. All, all they show. did is is go. Obviously, they lost Tyrone Smith uh, um, and, you know, but they went in the draft and they just went O-line, O-line, O-line. We wanted them to take every um, running back. Like, right, but they didn't. And said that they went one. O-line a few times and then a few times later. Um, they, they stayed away from the wide receivers. They didn't go wide receiver. They didn't go running back. I think they took like a sixth or seventh round wide receiver. So Rico Dowdle, man, just makes a whole lot of sense for me to grab late and, and really has a path to success. Like I, obviously he hasn't produced a whole lot, so I don't have a whole, whole lot to talk about with Rico Dowdle, but six foot, two fifteen, oh. good size coming out of South I, I Carolina. Might not be that good with um, being six feet. You might not I, re- I remember, might, might. you know, this is, this is what was a big Matt Waldman guy back in the day. Um, and he's finally kind of making making his way uh, up 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 to the top of the chart here, and, and I've liked uh, kind of what I've seen when on the field. I know I've said that about six times, but that's all I all I got for Rico. Just at this point, why why the hell not take take Rico Dowdle? So uh, that's going to be the last one. I, like I said, I was going to go Singletary because I like him, but I felt like Rico I needed the shout. Out. <laughs> I 
felt like he needed the shout out. I can feel it down in my plums. Yeah. I, can't stop. <laughs> I can't stop drafting him. I didn't call this one I can't stop drafting either. <laughs> I got so many title options. That's yeah, what we just, I think just, we've reached our quota. We okay. can't, we can't no hit anymore. They'll get mad at us. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the Don't sound let bites. the liberal media tell you how to think and feel. Suck it. I don't give a fuck what you think. Start your own show and do whatever you want. I am delivered. <laughs> yeah. Uh, listen, guys, stop trying to have fun. Stop trying to like drop sound bites that would trigger nostalgia and humor. You know? Do people really say that? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I sometimes I, I do too. So I'm like, yeah, I got a little out of control again. I can't help it. I get trigger happy, you know. Yeah. And sure. I and I need a refresh. I I'm, it's on my list. Okay, a lot of things on Jay Wayne's list. Refreshing the sound bites somewhere in there for sure. Yeah, I just if that's if that's if that's your big uh, beef. You know. Wait, wait. Uh, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> we'll hit it again. I really don't. And then you can just to another podcast. Dude. Oh wait, well, that's the next one. That is the next podcast. We're ah. we're gonna pivot to another podcast. We're gonna talk about pivoting. Let's see off of some. Uh, how many times the word pivot comes up? That's gonna definitely be like a drink word. We'll have a little fun with it. I don't know. I don't know. You can't just say that you have fun and then you have fun. But you have to. Right. We're just having fun out here. It's like you're not having. Fun. We're we're about fun. Then, Not. We, then we have no fun. We just talk the whole time. Well, we're going to try to have some fun. And this is the end of the podcast. So we get to do whatever we want. Captain Crunch is the best cereal. <laughs> for sure. And if you don't like it, then you can, go somewhere you can get else. the FF out of here, which is what we're going to do. Yeah. Austin, appreciate you. Go check him out at Austin Abbott. Two B's, two T's, and two F's. Oh, I'm gonna, now that I know that the sound bites bother people, you're going to get so many fucking sound bites. <laughs> the F is for fornicate. Yeah. All right. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Peace.